Hello and welcome back to another episode. Over the weekend something really important occurred and that is the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future. Yes, Back to the Future is 30. I'm 31-ish, I'm going to be 31 in September. Um, so basically this film is as old as I am. It's never really struck me until this weekend. And that's probably why I, I can't really remember a time when it didn't exist. Like, I can't even remember the first time I saw this film. It must have been on TV, because um, we didn't own the video growing up. I only bought the, video, the DVD box set a few years ago. Um, so this film has just always been there. It's always just sort of been either in my head or obviously on TV. Uh, maybe bank holiday Mondays, watching it over the weekends, this kind of thing. And uh, I just love it. I absolutely love Back to the Future. It's just amazing. Now, clearly, you're going to know this. Most people know this. Back to the Future is absolutely fantastic. And I'm not here to review the film. I just wanted to talk to you about it. Um, the opening of this film is fantastic. It opens with the ticking of clocks. And it fades in on this wall of clocks and pans across. And we see a news story about the, the, the Brown estate burning down and the sale of this estate. We see some famous scientists on the wall and it pans down to a bed. Oh, is someone living in this room perhaps? Ooh. And then we hear it, uh, the TV comes on automatically and we start to hear a, a news story about a, the theft of plutonium. And, uh, and, and, and as, as the camera continues to move, we come across a, an automated dog food uh, feeding machine which opens the can, tips upside down and splats the food onto like a pile of food. So presumably someone ha isn't actually here at the moment, but this machine's still trying to feed the dog. This mound of sort of ugh, nasty ass dog food. And then the door opens and in comes uh, our hero, his feet at least. And he calls out for Doc. And Doc, you here? No? Okay. And, uh, and he kicks his skateboard across the floor we can follow it across the floor and it bumps into a box which probably once contained plutonium. And in the, in the opening you get everything you need to know about Back to the Future. It is fun, it is quirky, it's got crazy uh, inventions, it's got um, interesting elements in terms of, for example, the illegality of the theft of plutonium. It's about time travel um, and then you go on to see uh, Marty blow up a guitar ampl amplifier, which as a kid I found so much fun. But obviously as an adult I, I really do cringe at that. Such a waste. Such a waste of a potential amplifier there. Uh, and then before you know it, Marty's late for school and he's got to rush off. And he's rushing off to the sound of the power of love. <laughs> um, this film is just fantastic and, uh, and it's all about the relationship between generations. Uh, it's all about actually the relationship between an old man and a young man, Doc Brown and Marty, but also actually between parents and children and also actually as you grow up watching this film between your childhood and your adulthood. And this is why Back to the Future is never going to go away, it's never going to get old because you understand it more the older you get and there are always kids watching it, there are always going to be adults watching it. It's just an amazing film. Now one of the things you've got to remember though is that this, yeah, this film is about all that stuff but it wasn't made as, as a history piece, it was made as a nostalgia piece because the people making the film in their 40s and 50s um, they were making a film about their childhood in, in the 50s so this, this, this film on every level from the makers to the actors to the, to the experience of viewing it is about this intergenerational relationship. Now, Watching this, as I say, watching this film as a child versus as an adult is a completely different experience. But watching it, having watched it as a child and then as an adult, it's like a revelation. You know, you get to, you get to, you, you see, for example, as a child, the frustration. You, you're there with Marty. You're going, yeah, that music's not too loud. What are you talking about, man? You know, kind of thing. But as an adult, you're going, yes, that music is quite loud. Yes, I can completely understand. Um, or, or for example, the, 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 the fact that he's, you know, he's sort of. Uh, playing with and falling in love with his girlfriend for the first time or or the um uh, the, the 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 fear of trying in life not wanting to be rejected this kind of thing thinking that you're always going to have another opportunity that you shouldn't you know, try too hard too soon and yet as an adult you look back and you go no 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 come on dive in you know don't fear the rejection crack on try it try something out and, uh, and the fact that not only do you see this as a, as, a, as a viewer, but also actually Marty sees this. He becomes essentially his own mum's um, father at one point, or at least her mentor, when he's observing uh, as a young woman how she's starting to drink and smoke. 
Now, she, he already knows where that's going to lead. He knows that she's going to be a, 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 a frog-voiced, croaky-voiced, um, slightly un, unhappy, smoking, drinking um, wife in the future. And he, and he tries to mentor his mum, um, having gone back in time. Uh, and and, and this, this, this is the reason why this film is so brilliant, is because it, it is... It is, it is it is about, it is exactly what its themes are, or what it is to watch the film. That's why the film's so perfect. And obviously they, tag, they, they, they did tag on parts two and three, but they did it so competently that you wouldn't really know, with the exception of the change, changing of a couple of, couple of actors here and there, you wouldn't know that, that this wasn't always planned to have a three-part film, three-part story. It's it's an amazing film and rightly called a modern day classic. And I just just wanted just to talk about how much I love it. I love uh, all the nostalgia, all the feelings, the warm the the, the, the warm sensations that, that I get watching this film. In particular, I remember one time when I was actually playing in a battle of the bands. Um, me and my band in high school, or one of my bands in high school. Um, we uh, we were playing at the at the Sun Center in Rill in the Battle of the Bands, and I believe we came first, first place. Um, but, but 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 being there on the stage, uh, all I could think about was that scene in in Back to the Future where Marty's there auditioning to be uh, the in the, the the band for the sort of the school dance, um, and then he eventually he finds himself being on stage at a school dance, but in the past. And uh, just being, it's just so iconic and also so resonant because in that moment I was Marty. You know, I had my guitar, I was ready to sing. We had uh, had the rest of the band uh, behind me. And I was thinking, this this, this is exactly what, this is what, this is what the film's about, but also this, 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 this is just so cool. Um, you know, and at that time, at that, it, it was, I don't know, it was like life affirming. You know, the, the idea that, I'm, yeah, I'm going through that rite of passage being in a band. <laughs> It's been with me through thick and thin in my life. It, it was there in high school um, when I when I was feeling exactly what Marty was feeling. Uh, it was there in university when I was thinking, will I ever get to be like a Doc Emmett, an Emmett Brown type? Will I ever actually succeed at uh, what I'm trying to do? Um, and now it's here for me now um, as a, as a as someone who's actually thinking about maybe becoming a father. And um, uh, and in that sense, it, it is just a self-fulfilling, amazing piece of cinema. It's just a beautiful thing, and, it, and I'm so pleased that it, that it is that it's still popular today. I mean, just imagine if it died out. Obviously, the time machine is just iconic. The DeLorean, that amazing car from Northern Ireland. Um, my wife always chuckles whenever it comes on. She's from Northern Ireland, and um, it's not a great car. But, <laughs> but the time machine, it's perfect for the time machine. There's that first scene when they send um, Einstein, the dog, one minute into the future. And uh, and th th those tire tracks, just so perfect. Uh, you don't need to know how it works. All you need to know is that it works and it leaves two streaming lines of fire on the floor, or even in the sky, if, uh, if I remember correctly, when it hovers in uh, parts two and part three, and uh, part three. So there's no real specific thing I want to say about Back to the Future. There's no specific memory. There's too many memories. There's too many good feelings associated with this movie. I, I just wanted just to, to record, partly for my own uh, sake, just how great Back to the Future is and how wonderful it is that it is now here and more popular than ever, aged 30. Um, it, it, it has been there at every stage of my life. And as I say, I, re I, I, I associate it with it now in a different way to what I, what I did when I was a child. And I imagine it's only going to get more and more interesting the older I get. You know, when, when I do end up um, being Emmett Brown's age, the film may even have other resonances for me. Uh, and in that sense, it's a film that just keeps on giving back. So, so cool. Um, anyway, guys, if you haven't watched Back to the Future, you really should. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure you'll just, you'll have a great time watching it. Um, as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.